Okay, we're going to talk about Luz Barragan. He was born in Guadalajara, Mexico, and he pursued a degree in engineering. He was originally a civil engineer, and then he was a self-taught architect. And he implements emotional architecture, which you see in this uh, picture. Um, after returning to Guadalajara, Barragan, influenced by his studies by traveling, and started this um, thing called emotional architecture. So, emotional architecture is themed around meditation and calmness. Um, some adjectives to describe his uh, structures are beautiful, inspiration, magical, spiritual, spellbound, and enchanting and mystical. He has his book called Contemporary Architects, and he states his beliefs that architects should design gardens to be used as much as the houses they build to develop a sense of beauty and a taste of inclination towards the fine arts and other spiritual values. This quote is absolutely gorgeous, in my opinion. Next, we will be talking about Berigan House in studio. He lived in Mexico um, for the majority of his life as an architect. And so, this house is located in Miguel de Lago, the borough of Mexico City, and it was a working class suburb. And it was built from concrete, and the house is built around a garden with walls enclosing it. It blends itself into the surrounding suburb. Barigan puts emphasis on lighting, more specifically, the selective use of lighting. In a mostly sunlit and hot area like Mexico City, people use shadows for comfort from the rest of the environment. Barigan uses this towards his advantage, in which he refers to as half-lighting. The use of light is the interior and the exterior, meaning the walls of the building create a sharp shadow, multiple sharp shadows that contrast those of the trees. One of the most amazing quotes that he says is, the soul of gardens shelters the greatest sum of the serenity at the man's disposal. <laughs> Lastly is Cuandra San Cristobal, located in Atzipan de Zaragoza, Mexico City. Made in collaboration with Andreas Caillas, and his work was commissioned by Eagerstom family. It contains stables, writing products, and four bedroom. It's a four bedroom house. It's constructed from brick, plaster, and terracotta. The structure is composed of flat planes arranged at different heights and to create this simple but differenting volumes. He effectively combines the interior and exterior by using long walls as dividers and making the main house ambiguous compared to all the other structures. A quote that he said was, I calculated the depth of the pond so th that when the horse passed, the water would reach the belly. It's amazing. This is Louis Barrigon. This is Elena Bobardi. She was born in Rome, Italy in 1914 to 1992. She is an Italian-born Brazilian modernist architect and industrial designer. Her di designs were daring and, dis and had distinctive structures that merged into modernism. Um, she earned a degree in architecture in 1939 in the University of Rome and studied under architecture such as Marcello or Giovanni, and she studied an innovative system for suspending paintings away from the wall. She replaced with the conventional wall hanging system. Later, she was an editor of the magazine Quaderni di Domus. She was commissioned in 1945 to document the devastation of World War II. In Sao Paulo, she began to study Brazilian culture from the anthropological perspective and was quite interested in the convergence of art and popular traditions. Her work combines a modernist sensitivity with a profound commitment to preservation of the vernacular and the design process. 
this is the glass house. And it was created in 1915. It is also called Casa di Vidiro. The topology is in the residential architectural houses. The, arc the location is in Morumbi, Sao Paulo, Brazil. On a 7,000 square meter plot of land, Morumbi neighborhood. The main part of the house is a horizontal between the thin reinforced concrete slabs with slender circular columns. The columns are pyotis, which allows the landscape to flow under the building. The open main living area, except for a courtyard that allows the trees in the garden below to grow up into the house's heart. There are different zones allocated to different functions of the house, dining room, library, and a sitting area, while the other sits on the solid ground at the top of the hill on the living room's north side. The technological, political, and cultural context of this building is that it was built during the flourishing movement for Brazilian design. She built it in the middle of nowhere in the Brazilian jungle. She incorporated pale blue stones and they were very popular to be used. She believed that simplicity is equivalent to sophistication and the ultra modern treehouse effect was definitely evident. And it was strengthened by glass windows and large trees surrounding or in the middle of the structure. So the structure was built after World War II, utter destruction of buildings. A quote is Europe, man's house is now rubble. And she looked for the optimism. And so she built this house and the house had sheer glass walls and the tree planted around it, them. One main aspect that she focused on was architecture versus the environment. The Pompeo Factory Leisure Center was made in 1986 in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It created a dialogue between the old and the new and preserved an important symbolic connection between spaces in the neighborhood. Functional programs and arrangement of buildings reinforce this intense and active use of internal street, and it combines a red brick building that housed a drum factory with three huge and unconventional concrete towers connected by aerial walkways. The technological, political, and cultural context of this is that the new buildings reinforced the manufacturing and industrial heritage of the complex. New buildings disrupt the delicate nature of the well-composed scale of brick warehouses and tiled roofs, presenting themselves as huge contain containers or industrial silos. The aerial walkways look like bridges, and it gave an old place a meaning. The concept is the culmination of Bobardi's experience with the local culture and her arrival in Italy in 1946. Buildings are popular appropriations of space. The center has reading rooms, classrooms, and a popular and popular restaurants. Louis Kahn, he was born on February 20th, 1901, March 17th to 1974. He was an American architect based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. United States. He was working, after working with various capacities for several firms in Philadelphia, he found his own later in 1935. He also liked Julian Guedet's elements and theories of architecture, faithfulness to the program, arrangement based on the site circumstances, constructability, emphasis on architectural truth, or the eschewing of excess effect, express structure or strength, and integration of utility and beauty. His designs has been celebrated not only for its beauty, geometry, and light, but for its structural and engineering innovations. Quotes like, architecture is the reaching out for the truth, and 
Design is not making beauty. Beauty emerges from the selection, integration, and love. And every time a student walks past a really urgent, expressive piece of architecture that belongs to his college, he can help reassure them that he does have he does have that mind, does have that soul. He continues with his quotes. Monumentality is enigmatic. It cannot be intentionally created. Neither the finest material nor the most advanced technology need enter a work of monumental character for the same reason that the finest ink was not required to draw up the Magna Carta. His building techniques are known for the human scale and creating a a strong formal distinctions between served spaces and servant spaces. His palette of materials tended towards heavily textured brick and bare concrete. The textures often reinforced to highly refined surfaces, such as travertine and marble. This is the Yale University Art Gallery. This gallery has order derived from the mutually solving structural system, circulation, and the building's services. Solution combined the rough texture of an archaic material, poured concrete with the precision and structural provocado of a highly mathematical and controlled systems approach to that material, balanced with highly refined details in glass, metal, and wood. The project is brief. Created by Dean Howe and the Yale president of Sawyer, called for the flexibility of loft type factory like open space or plain limber strategy. Limitations on the use of steel by the U.S. Department of Defense led to all concrete solution. He was seeking an expressive structural statement rather than mere efficiency and a concrete tetradural grid. He explains this concept of hollow stone. And a quote says, in Gothic times, arc built in solid stones. Now we build with hollow stones. The spaces defined by the members of these spaces, large in scale from the voids of insulating panel, voids of air, lighting and heat to circulate the spaces big enough to work, walk through and live in. And in so cyclopedic collection of art in several buildings on the campus of Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut. The gallery was founded in 1832 when the patriot artist John Trumbull donated the Yale College more than a hundred paintings of the American Revolution. The gallery's main building was built in 1953. It was among the first designed by Louis Kahn. The housing of the electrical and ventilating systems in the hollow concrete tetrahedrons that made up the ceiling appear to float overhead. Another quote, formal legibility of Kant's gallery in which function and form were significantly linked by the object's laws governing the cosmos. This is the Stock Institute for Biological Studies, La Jolla, California, 1966. It employs 850 researchers and 60 research groups and focuses its research on three main areas, molecular biology and genetics, neuroscience and plant biology. The entire 27 acre plan is massive. It consists of two symmetric buildings with a stream of water flowing in the middle of a courtyard that separates the two. The Stocks Institute's open environment teeming with empty space is symbolic of an open environment for creation. The symmetry stands for scientific precision and submerging crevices allow warm, natural light to enter the buildings like the intellectual light that leads to discovery. The concrete was made with volcanic ash relying on the basis of ancient Roman concrete, making techniques and as a result gives off a warm pinkish glow. The design also included living quarters and a conference building, but they were never actually built.
This is the Kimball Art Museum in Fort Worth in Texas, made in 1972. Quote opens up with, all material in nature, the mountains and the seams and air, and we are made of light which has been spent and this. Reflect then the meaning of school, a school institution. The institution is the authority, dot, dot, dot. So overall, his philosophy is about nature, mountains, light, and education. Yale Center for British Art has concrete frame corners, metal panels, ceiling at upper level, around level, skylight with towers, multi-floor height lobbies, and an egress stair. This is his Charles and Ray Eames. Their design theory is based on industrial designers, architects, filmmakers, and it's a unique American modernism, a contemporary, efficient, and inclusive design. They play an adventure, the useful and pleasure. A quote is, who would say that pleasure is not useful? Charles Eames. They use trial and error, and it's the equivalent to the learning process. And that leads to a model-making, iterative process. Another quote is, the details are not the details. The details make the product. Charles Eames. More of their design theory derives from problem solving not style but need another quote is the extent to which you have a style is the extent to which you have not solved the problem charles eames he then continues to say design for the universal part of themselves design as a way of thinking and not only as an, a profession Eames DCM Plywood Chair, Herman Miller, 1946. This is a dining chair metal and molded with plywood. The molded plywood was stronger, lighter, and ergonomic. The solution after six years of experimenting had a seat and back as a separate, and that would equal the honest use of the material. The design was lightweight for its time. Unlike most chairs as bulky furniture pieces, contour rather than cushioning for comfort, sensible form and design intuition. The design was accessible. Molding equals fast. Finishing equals sanding. Mass produced by Herman Miller and a very affordable $25 to the highest $150. Economical Contemporary Design. By 1951, quotes like, America's most famous modern chair was very ubiquitous, and people loved that it was multifunctional. It could be for living, working, or even playing. There's different types of chairs. The DCM was, was a America's most famous modern chair, in dining in a desk height. The rubber shock mounts added to seating and comfort. The LCM is another type of chair. It was a molded plywood with a low chair with metal legs and light and scale and the ideal lounge and reading chair for small areas. And there was LCW and it was molded plywood also. These chairs definitely made an impact on society. This is the Case Study House 8, Pacific Palisades, California, 1949. It is a prefabricated kit of parts. Two rectangles of glass and steel against a concrete retaining wall. The design is a house for living and working, and that is equivalent to no separation of life. 
public and private, and that's equivalent to what's visible to the eye, and it's straightforward. It's unselfconscious. It's a life and work. Let it be defined by its inhabitant. The design also exudes the working with the meadow integrated into hillside. Maximize volume for minimal materials. That's another quote. Nature as a shock absorber and a reorienter in the shadows of trees and translucent. The transparent contains enclosing structure and releasing space. The panels are equal to glass, semesto, plaster, aluminum, gold leaf, photographic. The structure exudes warm colors and housed collections of good things and Victorian clutter. Paradoxes are complete open. Serious colorful and industrial and homely. The context of this structure is that it's the early half of the Imez's career. John Intensa of Arts and Architecture magazine has explained that the case study house of program from the 1940s and 60s have architects that address the housing crisis and create homes of the modern man in life in the modern world using post-World War II technologies, prefabrication, mass production, industrial production. To continue, the produced early versions of user profiles of themselves are equivalent to the innovations in design thinking. Investigation of advancing post-war materials, showcase of their cluttered live work style and lifestyle to contrast with the stark modern design. The ongoing presence of the Eames chair in the Webster New World Dictionary equals an Americanism. Design within reach held 45 different Eames project products as of 2018. Eames office and Eames foundation. Eames house national historic landmark as of 2006. Charles Moore was born on 1925 and died in 1993. He was born in Texas and lived in the United States. His theme is postmodernism, responding to the rigid international style. He loved modern materials and technologies and made use of simple, humble, and comfortable forms. The fondness for the platonic solids in the pure forms and wanted to bring great architecture to everyone, not just the rich patrons. He prioritized projects that would benefit the public in both his professional practice and college classes he taught. For example, the Christage College Santa Cruz in California. Orenda House, Orenda, California, 1962, aka the Moore House. It was built for Moore himself. The extreme in its simplicity and the elegant in its execution was evident. The section view reveals one of two skylights in the structural pillars that create space inside the home. Both skylights are visible here. Note that they are hidden within a larger roof structure and do not visibly protrude from the form of the house. These elevations exemplify the simplicity of the house's form as well as show off the sliding window covers, which enabled both extreme openness when uncovered and complete privacy when shut. A quote from Gerald Allen, uh, the architecture and the author for, for 
Charles Moore, has stated, it forms admittedly derived from primitive huts in Mayan or Hindu temples. And Moore makes it clear that he is thinking in broad and recollective term when he made the design. A quote by Charles Moore has stated, the site was bought one day on impulse, simply because it seems full of magic. Years before, a bulldozer had cut a flat circular building site, which had since grown grassy and now seemed part of a natural setting, like those perfectly circular meadows that inspired medieval Chinese poets to meditate upon perfection. This quote explains how Moore's style was a response to the rigid forms and cold impersonality of late modernism international style. This is Sea Ranch, and this was created in the early 1960s, Sonoma County, California. And the architects were Richard Whittaker, Dolan, Linden, and Charles Moore, and William Turnbull, the early designers of the Sea Ranch in the courtyard of Condominium One. Sea Ranch is not a single building. It is an entire community located on 10 miles of Northern California coastline with buildings designed in tandem by several architects. Condominium One was the first residential unit in Sea Ranch, encompassing 10 industrial units of housing. The structure is indented to harmonious with nature and its choice of maternality and its use of large open windows. A quote from Moore is, live lightly on the land. So units had no walls, timber frame columns served to divide the space. The large windows served to connect the interior with the nature. Today, you could rent the house. Paul Rudolph was born in Ecton, Kentucky, 1918. His father was a preacher and he got his bachelor degree at Auburn U University. He went to Harvard for six years and he stu studied with Walter Gropius. He also served in the Navy. His design theory was modern and brutalist. Brutalist has a big monolithic blocky appearance and he was the most influential American brutalist architect. He had complex designs, intricate creation of space and varying levels. It's very purposeful. And it had materials such as smooth concrete, textured concrete, steel front frames, and glass. This is the Millam House, Ponta Vedra, Florida, made in 1962. It's a residential home. Beachfront has five bedrooms and five bathrooms. It was designed with zones intended for different moods. It has lightweight framework structure that creates a facade visible from a distance, and it appears to be non-functional. Blocks direct sunlight from certain windows and it cools the interior. Facing and it faces the ocean, but it's closed off. It has fixed glass window panes and a relationship between interior and exterior spaces. The Milam House was the first building Rudolph incorporated air conditioning into. Walls and floors were constructed to block direct sunlight and light color interior reflects light better zones. The ground floor is the living room, kitchen, garage, and the upper floor is are the bedrooms and bathrooms. The expansions are the garage and studio. This is the Yale Art and Architecture Building built in New Haven, Connecticut in 1963. Yale University School of Architecture and Design had a brutalist style to it. 
It had a steel frame with textured concrete and a dominating presence. It is seven stories tall. As three to race levels and its center communal space, it's a positive initial response to the building. The pains got worse over time, although, when a fire started in 1969, and it cost $126 million for it to restore. He taught at Yale University, influenced young architects, and he taught by Walter Gropius and Learn Brutalism. The Milam house context is subtropical landscape in Florida. The air conditioning and the cooling systems. Residential Oceanside House, $4.45 million. And it is a modernistic influence. Yale Art and Architecture Building context, which you see right here, is used by Yale University, still around today, has been renovated, and one of the first brutalist buildings. James Sterling, earliest architects to use technology and new materials in architecture. He believed that the human humanistic approach has to be given more importance. He saw architecture as an expression of art, not merely of social planning and engineering. The use of color was a characteristic of these buildings. Sterling's signature was mulland glass, colored building materials in simple geometric forms, and apparently random fenestration punched and cut into the building. Influenced by later designs of Le Corbusier and theories of the Smith and Sons, Sterling and Gowen produced several influential buildings, which started a trend towards brick and exposed concrete. The such buildings were known as the Red Trilogy. During the 1970s, the architectural signature of Sterling began to change as the scale of his projects moved from small and not very profitable to large, as Sterling's architecture became more overtly neoclassical, though it remained deeply imbued with his powerful revisioned modernism, postmodernism. This is the Leicester Engineering Building, Leicester, England, 1963. It shows modernism. This project was done with James Gowen. It has a large areas of glazing contrasted with heavy monastery forms. The auditoriums are cantilevered structures, horizontal truss supported at the middle and sustaining a load at one end or both ends. The building cannot be understood from one point of view. The walls are constructed of red Ekrigenton brick and red Dutch tiles. The engineering building was a strong contrast to earlier British post-World -war, War II work and was the origin of James Sterling's international reputation. The engineers wanted a water tank for the ground floor hydraulics lavatory so to create required pressure the tanks was placed on top of the tower the ground floor buildings have a distinctive angled roof to allow in north light and contained workshops and lavatories the design of the roof is so unique and there are two types of glass in the roof translucent ply glass and the inner layer of fiberglass that and opaque glass coated with aluminum. This is the Flory Building, Oxford University, England, 1971. The third and last of the Red Trilogy solidifies Sterling as an irreplaceable facet in modern architecture. The Flory Building was named after Provost and 1945 Noble Laureate Lord Howard Flory who sat on the committee in charge of choosing an architect for the project. Although Sterling was not the most popular choice for lead architect on the project, Sterling was ultimately agreed upon because of the promise and potential held in his reputation at the time to deliver an iconic modern building to produce and boost the college reputation and enrollment.
The structure is primarily a concrete frame with exposed A-frame feet at the ground level. As with his previous university buildings, terracotta tiles make up the majority of the facade, while the inside of the somewhat U shape made up of a glazing system that faces north and overlooks the river Cherwell. The building contains 74 dormitories over four levels with the top level of double height gallery rooms for graduates and a ground level equipped with a dining hall and other general rooms. Its delayed com completion was almost a year and a half later that promised due to logistical issues within Sterling's office and delayed construction drawings from his office to the contractor's site. Stadt's Gallery Stuttgart, Stuttgart, Germany in 1984. This building was an addition to the existing Stadt's Gallery. Sterling worked with Michael Wilford. The new Stadt's Gallery was designed after Sterling and Wilford won a limited entry competition in 1977. United Modern Elements with Classical Ones was optimizes the first stage of postmodernism. Sterling's design incorporated the sloping site as part of an architectural prom promenade that moved the public walkway through the museum that embodied the transitions of the classical art of the Alt Stats Gallery and the modern art of New Stats Gallery. His design stemmed from the idea to combine the traditional designs elements of classical 19th century museums with modern complementary industrial materials. Sterling combines materials of the past, taffentine, and sandstone with colored industrial steel throughout the museum, pink and blue steel pipes, for example. Developing a relationship with modern materials resulting in a uniquely postmodern museum. Peter and Alison Smithson led British Brutalism into the 20th century. British Brutalism is an architectural style that emerged from Britain that were mainly adapted to institutional or public buildings. It had rough, unfinished surfaces, uncommon shapes built with heavy materials, and contained small windows. The disruption of World War II and the start of the, the baby boom was a time period that required a boost of large housing educational structures that Peter and Allison were ready to create. The Smithsons assisted in forming the core elements of brutalism and whom Stanton school stood for an escape from modernism. This was the first manifestation of brutalism movement. The structure contained low cost modernity, a focus on materials, purity, and they made sure that the buildings reflected the inhabitants and its location. Modernism with a human face is a quote that they use. The Economist Building, London, England, 1964, was commissioned to design a headquarters for The Economist magazine in Piccadilly. The structure was inspired by the narrow lanes and courts of the old city of London, and it is surrounded by two other buildings that create a, pl a plaza trio. It contains rough face concrete and is offset by large w glass windows. The Smithson wanted to apply their ideas of urban restructure by creating a structure that would separate the persons from distractions of the street but create a smooth transition from what isolated plaza. The idea was called Street in the Sky. The Smithson were believers that a building's function should be integrated seamlessly into the building's design so it can display both beauty and functionality. They integrated ventilation and lighting by placing a mechanical chase within the columns as a way to hide the system while simultaneously using the columns to transfer air and water effectively a representation of the progression of from the practices that many architects shared at the time. The site and structure integrated the sense of human scale as an experience due to the tall buildings being placed further back 
of the whole structure. Architects at the time saw the main street of a site as a place where the architect's bold statement was made. But the Smithsons choose to not compete with the surrounding buildings by placing them in the back. The proportion and placement of the buildings within the site pushed Smithson's agenda of a new planning strategy. A tall structure on a narrow street allowed the average pedestrian to be unaware of the height that surrounded them. Robin Hood Gardens, London, 1972 is a social housing complex located in the residential area of Polar in East London. The residential buildings post-war Britain were a symbol of progress. The Smithsons pushed for modern architecture designs with low cost and available materials, so their structures came with a utilitarian aesthetic. Concrete and consist of two horizontal structures with a total of 213 apartments. One of the story buildings is 10 stories high to allow more sunlight to enter, while the other building is 7 stories high. There's also an urban garden with the building. Every third level of the building has a wide concrete balcony that stems off towards the center of the site to look over the garden. It is meant for people to walk and for children to play, as the Smithsons were thinking as the apartment complex as its own neighborhood street. There was a debate concerning whether the, the design of the building was a success due to the building's issues with crime. Currently, the developers are eager to demolish the building because its decline in maintenance has left the structure looking less desirable to live in. Radical vision of the new form of social housing and will forever remain as important piece of architectural history in Great Britain. This is Hermann Hertzberger. A major influence of the 20th century architecture was to challenge the early modernist belief that form follows function, that the, the shape of a building was defined by its purpose. His buildings offer flexible in-between spaces that encourage our deeper human needs of dwelling and social activity. Structuralism. What matters in the interaction of form and users what they convey to each other and bring about in each other, and how they mutually take possession of each other. Montessori School, Delft, Netherlands, 1966. It's a spatial articulation that permits activities to take place simultaneously without one disturbing the other. The classrooms, which are L-shaped, so as to articulate different zones of concentration. Together, generate a complementary wide central corridor, which menders diagonally through the building. Attention has also been given to the external zone and entrances, creating spaces which can be used in many ways. This is Central Bahir Appledore, Netherlands in 1972. An office building as workspace for a thousand people designed as a single articulated unit consisting of 60 tower-like cubes connected on each floor by overpasses. The extensive central street area in which the space is equally developed in the vertical and horizontal direction calls to mind that the street pattern of medieval town Materials of glass-roofed inner space evoke an outdoor atmosphere. In each corner, there is a place to have coffee, to relax, and hold meetings. The illumination throughout is an inter integral, integral part of architecture, and this, in his, this case, conceived in terms of street lighting. The transparency and lightness of metal stairs together with glass brick feelings create a harmonious contrast with the heavily dimensioned main structure of the building. This is Robert Venturi. He states, less is bore. There's a book called Complexity and Contradiction in Architecture, made in 1966 translated and published in 18 languages. The chapters three and five, ambiguity, contradictory levels, the phenomenon of both and in architecture, this double functioning element. 
chapters 6 to 10, the conventional element contradiction, adapted contradiction, juxtaposed the inside and outside, the obligation towards the difficult whole. 50s and 60s reduction, standardization, and commercialization is less than minimal, destruction destructive of history without humor. A formalist symbolism, a play with the elements of codes of design. Symbolism is inherent to the object, be it a poem or a building, and does not depend on the object's relation with the external world. Enables Venturi to stress the extent to which design decisions are defined by its means, conventions, rules, and systems. Resistance to abstraction allows Venturi to distance himself from a pragmatic view of architecture, both historical and contemporary. And he, in learning from Las Vegas, the forgotten symbolism of architectural form, Robert Venturi denies Scott Brown and Stephen Eisenhower in 1972. A quote that they use is, building becomes sculpture where all architectural symbols are submerged and distorted by the overall symbolic form. Decorated shed, buildings where systems of space and architect and structure are directly at the service of the program. The functions that the buildings is in intended to perform and ornament is applied independently of them. The irony may be the tool with which to confront and combine divergent values in architecture for a pluralist society and to accommodate the differences in values that arise between architects and the clients. Social classes rarely come together, but if they can make temporary alliances in the designing of buildings of multi-valued community architecture, a sense of paradox and some irony and wit will be needed on all sides. The Guild House, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 1963. The Guild House was designed not as a Le Corbusierian slab in a park, but along a street right up to the sidewalk in an ordinary urban setting as a building with openings as windows in walls and brick rather than concrete, with an opening as an arch and with a comp compositional duality at the entrance with a big column in its center rather than the minimalistic column. Also, it contains a signal most commercial in its quality. Van Venturi House, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 1964. It's a complex and contradictory decorated shed, a movable shed, built the house for his mother between 1962 to 1964, and testing his beliefs on complexity and contradiction, for which he also wrote the book Complexity and Contradiction in Architecture. Venturi went through six fully worked out versions of the house, which slowly became known as the first example of a postmodern architecture. One can detect the symbolic imagery of shelter through its exterior with its wide symmetrical gable like a like a classical pediment, which in this case is split, and the chimney poking out in an exaggerated manner. From the back. This is the fire station number four, Columbus, Indiana, 1968. The building committee for fire station number one, four required a ordinary building that was easy to maintain. The plan is simple. Almost equal space is given to the apparatus room on the right and the storage living quarters on the left. By placing the required hose tower in front and making it semicircular, it is absorbed into the facade, giving a monumentality to the otherwise small building and reflects its civil importance. Because the dormitory is lower than the apparatus room, the parpet is applied to the facade to simplify the front and enhance the scale. The facade is predominantly white glazed brick that interlocks in a pattern with the plain red brick of sides and wraps around the corner. The white brick, the gold lettering at the top of the 
tower, identifying station, the tower itself, and the big flagpole in the middle of the front lawn all contribute to the building's civic statement. This crisp, functional building creates an appropriately ordinary yet distinctive image for the rescue and social activities associated with a community fire station. Sansbury Wing of the National Gallery, London, England, 1991. The fact that the result of a contradictory collage like this is not pastage, but a original self-contained creation is due to the intellectual caliber and design skills of Trafalgar Skraritz authors. This is a quote by Pritzker Prize essay, 1991. For his masterpieces, Venturi used, without exception, familiar ingredients which combined in a way which is constantly surprising. This has not produced astonishing end results, but also reinterpreted the individual in ingredients. Single, singles Venturi's out as a truly great architect because he refuses to be labeled, because he questions the very principle of labeling, because he forces us, as his mentor, Louis Kahn, did before him, to completely rethink traditional categories of architecture or contradictory window placement, even those which ha we have created ourselves, and above all, because he teaches us to look at architecture, all architecture, not just us as his own, with new eyes. This is the continuation of the quote. So the extension, 1991, was born into a precarious no man's land between the warring camps of neo-modernists and traditionalists who had been tussling over the, the direction of Britain's cities for much of the prior decade. The sites of the extensions had to come to be one of the most symbolic battlefields in the British architecture since a campaign to halt its redevelopment of a high-tech scheme by Adrenz Burton Corlec had led the project's refusal at planning 1984. Giovanni Mussolini was an Italian architect of the 20th century. He mixed a lot of traditional and modern techniques and wasn't tied to one style. He came from a family that had a strong sense of artistic iron craftsmanship. This led to Mussolini being immersed with architects and other professionals of that field from an early age. He witnessed the ever-changing architectural designs of Italy throughout his lifetime. His designs were more linear, loathed by conservatives at the time, but loved by modernists. Revolutionary designs because he searched for a uniqueness between structure and architecture, where his space was developed as an architectural path. Church of the Autostrada, Florence, Italy, in 1964. It was built in the middle of his career, also called the San Giovanni Battista Church, del Autostrada del Sol. And it was formerly named after the John the Baptist, but is also named as the Church of the Freeways of the Sun. And it is a reflection of societal changes in the 1960s. The idea of society shifting towards a more mobile culture, new religious ideologies being brought up in the pronouncements of the Second Vatican Council in 1960s, is on a highway, it is also on a highway in Italy that is between two Autostrada roads, Autostrada del Sol, Freeway of the Sun. Autostrada is an Italian expressway, which is a part of Autostrada of Italy, which forms the Italian national system of motorways, meant to reflect modern and traditional church designs. The cross, floor plan, and stone equal a traditional design. Tent-like vertical elements and copper equal a modern design. Asymmetrical 
floor plan. And the floor plan follows curves to create the feeling of fluid space. The materials for the projects include stone and concrete for the walls, a copper roof that is oxidized in, into the green color due to its outside, and the weather. The roof has been burnished blonde in the interior. Burnished is to polish, especially materials of rubbing. The interior elements are mainly composed of marble, glass, and bronze. Casa Risparmio de Pistoia e Pescia Pistoia, Italy, 1965, was built in the middle of his career. The full name is Palazzo de, de la Casa de Risparmio de Pistoia e Pescia. Name translates to Savings Bank of Pistoia. Casa Ris Risparmio equals Savings Bank. It is actually a reconstruction, built in place of the previous commodity exchange that was by Tito Alzolini, and it was demolished for Mussolini saw that it was the best option. It was redesigned the building and the interior furnishings. The style was, is Neo-Renaissance. The photo to the right shows an expansion that Mussolini did this project as well and it is located in central Pistoia, Tuscany, Italy. It has two parts to it, the main building, the larger rectangular building with the opening in the center and the, the expansion to the right of the building. And it has two entrances, one from Via S. Matteo, which is slightly raised above street level. The other main one to the right is the 19th century building. The exterior utilizes rustic ashlars and abelirs stone, which acts as a backdrop for San Leon. The stone is paired with modern aluminum windows on the front facade. The windows alternate with pillars. Banca Monte de Pasci di Siena, Colle Val di Elsa, Italy, 1978. This project was more towards the end of his career. This project is a bank slash agency office commissioned by Monte de Pachi de Siena in 1973. Defined as an open and largely practicable, practicable uh, building. Collaborated with Bruno Sashi. Sashi later did variations and additions to the building. Alternate and it alternates between the compactness and the open space, is, the re is in the region of Tuscany in the town of Coed Val di Elsa. Mussolini did multiple sketches and variations of the building when first commissioned, but in the end went with his favorite idea, having a large open space that is open to the public. This project by Mussolini has five floors, each floor is designed differently, that has both horizontal and vertical paths, interchanging from the outdoors and the indoors. The floors include the basement, which contains the garage and the vault, ground floor, characterized by the abundance of empty space that is conceived as a market square in Tavertine, is covered in the appearance of metal structures with hinges on Tavertine plinths, mezzanine floor, which is a walkway area that leads to a volume, light and hanging from the structure, which leads to the north, to the meeting room and the administration offices. The first floor, which has customer spaces as well as the upper floor. And it's divided into three different spaces, spaces forming an L shape. The central one with a rectangular plan, having a large hall with three walls covered in windows. Then you enter the area of administrative offices that are located north. Two aerial walkways also lead to the west side of the building. The second floor consists of the gallery of the lounge on the floor below. It is also perceived as an open path where the desk of the employees are located. The attic is just a single room with light walls. Ongoing presence of everything is that, is that the Church of Autostrada is a tourist attraction and still functions as a place of worship. 
passive respiratory di pistoia e piscia, a commonly exchanged space that is still in use. Face criticism because the locals preferred the building before it was demolished. They now judge the new building that p- a part of the space they don't necessarily match with M- Michelini's catalog. Banca Monte di Pasci di Siena is still a functioning bank that houses space for customers and employees alike.